Welcome back to my channel and happy Friday. Happy 4th of July. I'm so excited that it's on a Saturday this year. We have a barbecue tonight. We have a barbecue tomorrow, both at our house. So I have lots of prep work, getting the house ready, decorated for the 4th of July, but I couldn't be more excited. Definitely down in the comments, let me know what your plans are for the 4th of July and what are your plans as far as staying on track during the 4th of July as well. That's something to definitely take into consideration. I am about to head over to my office to join in on my virtual workshop. I did already weigh in this morning. I'll be sharing that with you as well as the virtual workshop topic. And we're gonna have a little chat. We're gonna talk a little bit about my video on points versus calories. I'm gonna share some additional information and some really exciting news that has happened since I put that video out and just clarify my thoughts on WW versus calories because over, although the support has been overwhelming for you guys, I've received over 400 messages saying that you had no idea how little you were actually eating. I want to just remind you guys of a couple of key points, key takeaways from that video. So we're going to have a little heart to heart, a little chat, a little tough love after I do my weigh in. But before I head into my office, I want to talk a little bit about my week. So as you guys may or may not know, we started my 90 day challenge over in my Facebook group on July 1st. So just a couple of days ago. Now that challenge is however you want to work the challenge. There isn't a set guideline, but we are basically committing to whatever we're following program wise for 90 days. We are going to track our results. We're going to have live zoom calls. We are doing giveaways and prizes. And basically the challenge is strictly for the summer. It is for us to set some goals for the summer and then as a collective group, we're going to try to reach those goals. So it's been great so far. We have over 125 members. We chat every single day on there. I have my first giveaway coming up here on Saturday. It's been amazing. So it's not too late to join. If you want to join us, just go on my Facebook group and then select the 90 day challenge at the top of the group and you can read all about it and request to join. We'd love to have you. It's been a ton of fun so far. So that's kind of been exciting this week. It's kept me on track for sure the last few days. But overall, you guys, I had a really good week. I went back to Jazzercise for the first time in the studio on Wednesday. And man, it kicked my butt. I've been doing Jazzercise at home, but let me just tell you, I barely made it through that workout. I don't know if it's because I'm working harder in the studio than at home. I don't know, but holy moly. And I am back in studio tomorrow as well. So exercise has been on point Nutrition's been on point. I've made a lot of really good changes for me over the last few weeks as far as nutrition goes, and it's going perfect. I'm so excited and I am loving it. So let me head into my workshop and I'll be back in just a flash to share my weight loss update as well as the workshop topic and we'll have that chat. Welcome back. I just got out of my virtual workshop and it was a fantastic topic. We talked about sitting and what to do if we find ourselves sitting a lot. And I really think in this quarantine, in this time of working from home, we're probably honestly sitting a lot more than we would if we were in the office or at our workplace because we're getting up to use the restroom, which may be down a hall or a flight of stairs, or we're going to the copy machine, the fax machine. We're outside working, we're walking around, we're going from office to office, floor to floor. But when we're at home, we're sitting at our desk all day. And have you guys heard the saying, an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion. This is a famous saying from Newton. There's no final exam after this video, but I think that rings incredibly true. If we sit a lot, we sit a lot and we're not in motion, we're at rest. If we're up and we're at them, we're in motion regularly. And I think that a lot of extra sitting not only can stunt our weight loss, but can really truly be bad for our health. Have you also heard the saying, sitting is the new smoking? Because they say that sitting so much is just like smoking. Think about you during a regular day, especially a work day. Do you find yourself sitting a lot? I know that I do. If I am editing or on my computer responding to emails, I'm sitting a lot. And I consciously think about that sometimes or my Fitbit goes off and buzzes at me and tells me that I need to get up because I need my 250 steps this hour. 
But I know for me, I find myself sitting a lot more than when I was out and about more or actually in the workplace more. So I'm going to share with you some tips from WW on how to break that cycle of sitting all the time, getting up, getting a little more motion in every single day. And hopefully that will help you reach not only your fitness goals, your health goals, and your weight loss goals. Did you know that there are little mini workouts in the WW app? They are called Fit On. I'll put that here on the screen for you guys, but it is part of your app. It is free with your membership to WW, but there are certain minute segmented workouts for free on the app. So if you find yourself sitting all the time, momming, dadding all the time, adulting all the time, get up and do one of these quick five minute fit on activities in your app. It'll give you five minutes of activity, maybe set an alarm on your watch or your phone or your computer every hour, every couple hours to get up and just do a little bit of a fit on workout for five minutes. Do you find yourself in back to back Zoom calls or digital meetings? Get up between every meeting and move across the room or into another room or down the hall or inside or outside. That way you're getting up and moving moving between each video call instead of just sitting in one place the entire time. Hey, a little bit of movement across the room for the next video call is better than sitting all day. I absolutely love this tip. Anytime you get a text message, get up and stand to respond. Don't engage in any type of text messaging unless you're standing. Let me just tell you, I'll be standing a lot because I get a lot of text messages. I get a lot of direct messages on Facebook and Instagram. And every time I get one before I'm allowed to respond, I have to stand up. Standing burns way more calories than sitting. It's better for your body. It engages your muscles. So challenge yourself. Every time you get any type of message before you respond, stand up. You can even get in a few extra steps just eating your dinner as a family. Instead of bringing all of the dinner pieces to the table at once and putting all the courses out, do each course individually. So drop one course, walk back to the kitchen, get the second, and so on and so forth. That way you're getting those extra steps just bringing dinner to the table for your family. The next tip kind of goes hand in hand with setting reminders or bells on your phone or your computer. Set yourself a reminder for every hour to get up and stand up. Whether that's just standing in place while you're working or on a phone call or walking around your kitchen table or doing laps around your house, set yourself a reminder to actually get up and physically move at least once per hour. And I absolutely love this last one. Genius. I would have never thought of this. When you're sitting in bed on the couch watching TV, you're all cozy. Set an alarm in another room. So in your bedroom, in the living room, wherever, is across the house from where you're currently watching TV, set it for every hour. And when the alarm goes off, you actually have to get up from watching TV and walk out and turn the alarm off. I love this. It's guaranteed that you're going to get steps in once an hour because who wants to listen to an alarm going off nonstop while you're trying to watch TV? I mean, come on. So those are the five tips from WW on how to break the cycle of sitting all day. I know for me, I can use every single one of those six tips. I think they're excellent. I love the last one. It's literally genius, and I am totally going to do this because I find myself at night after I've eaten dinner, taken my shower, just cuddled up in bed with the dogs, and I don't move until I get up to brush my teeth to go to bed. And I think by setting that alarm, I'm going to have to get up every hour to go turn it off. So I love it. I think these tips are excellent. And I think that we should try to incorporate one, if not all of them into our daily routine. So now let's talk about my weigh-in. I kind of shared with you guys how my week went. My week went really well. I'm loving this challenge. It's staying me committed to exercise. It's keeping me committed to tracking all of my food because I don't get a star on that date on my calendar unless I'm within my caloric range, my points range, and I'm getting in some exercise. I get an extra star. So it's just really motivating to be able to go put that star in my calendar every single day. And remember, if you're not part of my Facebook group or our challenge, it'll make a little more sense. If you'd like to come over and join us, we'd love to have you be part of both communities. So that link is down in the description box below. So overall, my week went really, really well. Food-wise, exercise-wise, weight-wise, because when I stepped on the scale, I am down 1.8 pounds. What a great start for July. I am so excited. Ah. So I'm down 1.8 pounds. That is my first weigh-in for July. I can't wait to see next week's weigh-in because I will have a full week under my belt of the 90-day challenge. This week was about half of the week, and I can't wait to see what results I get on the scale with how I've set up my challenge for summer. So 
that was my weigh-in, 1.8, you guys. I'm so excited about that. Now that I've shared my weigh-in, the workshop topic, let's have a little heart-to-heart. -heart. Let's have that chat I talked about. So as you may or may not know, a few days ago, I put out a video called The Shocking Truth Behind Points and Calories. And I shared with you a lot of the research that I've been doing over the last few weeks and talking to so many of you, literally hundreds of you, about where you're at points versus calories on a day-to-day -day basis. In this video, I not only shared with you my thoughts on WW and reaching our caloric goals. In a nutshell, what I had said in the video is that I believe that if you eat the minimum number of smart points every day and you're not focusing on zero point foods, if you're just eating what sounds good, which is great because that's what WW is about, being able to eat what we want as long as it's within our points. But if you find yourself eating a lot of processed foods or a lot of foods that have low caloric value but high smart points, it's very likely that you're not reaching your calorie goal for the day. And this is where a lot of these comments that I'm only eating 800, 900, 1,000 calories came from is these are the people who aren't focusing all of their meals and snacks around zero point foods, lean proteins, fruits and vegetables. They're eating what sounds good. They're eating that granola bar or cereal for breakfast or maybe waffles for a dessert with some peanut butter and some whipped cream. And because these foods are lower in calories, but higher in points, they're struggling to reach their calorie goal. So in that video, I clearly shared that if you are focused around zero point foods, in fact, I shared an example of one of my days that I ate a lot of zero point foods and I was able to stay within my points. In fact, I had one point left over and meet my calorie goal. I was under 100 calories, which is not a big deal at all. It's still well within where I like to see myself calorically wise. You can certainly be on WW and meet your calorie goal. It's just the foods that you choose. And honestly, most people, and this is so true, so many of you have reached out and said, yeah, I'm not somebody that focuses on zero point food. So for me, I'm not reaching my calorie goal every day. I'm far below, but I'm surpassing my points goal. And I think that this is something that needs to be restated. WW designed the zero point foods for a reason because they're low calorie, low fat, healthy options. If you're focusing your meals around those, I imagine you'll be able to not only hit your points goal, but hit your calorie goal as well. So again, it's all about the foods that you're choosing to eat on WW. I am not knocking WW. I'm on WW. I love the program. For me, I just wanted the knowledge in the bank of knowing that even though I'm reaching my points, am I reaching my calories? And for me, until I shifted the foods that I was choosing, I was not reaching my caloric goal. And that's what prompted me to double track, to track calories, to really pay attention to what I was putting in my body and comparing those points values to the calorie value. So I just want to reiterate that I don't have anything against WW. I just think it's important for us if we're concerned about what we're eating, if it's not a lot of zero point foods, that we should just double track, even if it's for a short period, just to see where we fall. I don't think double tracking for a short period or even the long term is a bad thing. I think it gives you knowledge of where you are in your points versus calories, making sure you're eating enough, and in fact, making sure you're not overeating. I just think it's important for us to have that information. I wasn't saying that you need to do that for the rest of your life. If that's not what you want to do, if you don't want to double track for the rest of your life, you certainly don't have to, but it's a good way to gauge where you're falling. I also want to briefly touch on the information that I shared in that video from Jordan Syed. Now, I will link his channel down below again, just like I did in that video. Now, I clearly stated that I'm not a doctor, a nutritionist, or a dietitian. I did a lot of research. I did a lot of calorie calculators, macro calculators, Jordan's philosophy, Joe Blow's philosophy, and I came up with a solid bit of information, and I think that Jordan Syatt has hit the nail on the head. So in that video, I was just sharing with you the research that I've done. Never once did I say that I am educated. I'm not a fitness professional. In fact, I clearly stated in that video that I am not, but I was just wanting to share with you my knowledge. And I don't think sharing my knowledge is saying that I'm a fitness professional. I think sharing my knowledge is sharing my knowledge. And it's funny 
to share this knowledge on Jordan Syatt because if you're not, again, part of my Facebook group or my 90 day challenge, you wouldn't know that I have not only been texting with Jordan directly, I had a call with him yesterday. He saw my video. He said my video was so well done. He appreciated that I had dug so deep into his philosophy. So he wanted to hop on a call with me to talk a little bit more about that. I could ask my questions, which I did. And I feel really, really good, even better now with the information that I shared in that video about that information being absolute fact after having a conversation with Jordan. And spoiler alert, he's a fan of WW or Weight Watchers if you're eating the right foods. So entirely backing up what I said in that video. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I wanted to have this heart to heart, a little bit of tough love, just saying that just because someone shares something with you on YouTube, research that they've done, essentially their opinion, they're not saying that they're a medical professional or anybody that has all this infinite wisdom that you should listen to. They're just sharing with you the research that they've done and essentially their opinion and how they are actually going to work the program moving forward. I think it's invaluable and I think by watching a lot of different people on YouTube, you gain a lot of different information and it's your responsibility to do your research if you question any information that you're receiving. So I also want to end this little chat by thanking you guys for all of your support. I literally have received over 400 messages thanking me for that video, saying that you are so excited to be able to know what calories you're eating compared to your point so that you can make better food choices on your WW program. So you should be able to be healthier and see the weight loss you wanna see on the scale during your journey. And one more quick thing I wanna to touch on is my philosophy moving forward is to make sure I'm reaching my caloric goal every day and I am slow and steady wins the race when it comes to weight loss because I think it's important to develop good eating habits, to not undereat as well as not overeat. And even if my weight loss is a little slower on the scale, I'm developing good eating habits. I'm not restricting myself from certain foods or restricting my calories so low that when I do eat what I want, I'm tending to overeat or binge on those foods. That's the mindset a lot of us get into when we restrict ourselves or we eliminate certain foods out of our diet. So I just wanted to let you guys know that the number on the scale is important to me, but it's not the be all end all. My health and losing weight in a healthy, sustainable matter is what matters most to me. So with that being said, I'm off my soapbox. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that I shared some important information with you as far as sitting versus standing. I'm going to link Jordan's channel down below as well as my video on points versus calories so you guys can check that out. If you haven't seen it, my Facebook group, everything is down below for you guys. Also the links and discount codes to my favorite things. So check those out as well if you're looking for some great deals on some of the things that I've shared. Speaking of favorites, I did put out my favorites video just the other day. I'll link that down below as well. If you haven't seen that, you can see what some of my June favorites were. If you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to stick around. I do a weigh-in every Friday where I talk about my week, the WW topic. I share some tips and tricks. And sometimes we have these little heart-to-heart chats as well. So to join my YouTube channel, just go ahead and click that little subscribe button. Make sure you're hitting the bell next to it so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. If you love these weigh-in videos, these car chats, these heart-to-hearts, give this video a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it and it really, really helps my channel. So thank you so much in advance for that. Leave down in the comments how your week went. What are your thoughts on sitting versus standing? How do you feel about points versus calories? What are your plans for the 4th of July? Leave it all down in the comments for me. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Happy 4th of July and I'll see you all in tomorrow's huge, and I mean huge grocery haul. Bye guys. Hi, hi.